Welcome to MMA Dogs. My name is Hector, and as always, I want to thank you for tuning in. A special thank you to all of our clients, and uh, I am very excited for 2015 and everything that is in store. Um, UFC 182. My goodness, this is a very exciting card, and uh, I can't wait to get down to business here, break things down. Um, so let's jump right into it. Now, <clears throat> before I get started, um, you always want to keep things in check, so you never want to bet more than you can afford to lose. Of course, we always go into it with the best of intentions, wanting to make as much money as possible, but you have to be responsible. And the second thing is, is that uh, uh, much respect to all the uh, men and women, all the fighters um, stepping into the octagon. So, um, you know, it, it's time to um, break it down, not to make friends. And then the third thing is you always want to check your local laws and government, uh, make sure that uh, everything is okay. So, for UFC 182, a ton of promotion has been made for this fight, a ton of publicity, and um, this is one of the rare fights, rare um, instances where we can actually make all this publicity and all this hype work for our favor, and uh, God willing, you know, everything will work out uh, the way it's supposed to. And I think, uh, I believe, I believe that uh, that this card is going to uh, be one of those, be one of those, uh, or this this fight is going to be one of those fights that really um, cements uh, John Jones, love him or hate him, as a true, just a, a real, um, on his way to being a real legend of the sport. So let's get. To the first fight of the night, not as exciting as the last fight of the night. This is Alexis Dufre versus Marion Renault. Um, I'm not, to be completely honest, I'm not thrilled or excited about uh, either one of these fighters. Uh, I think Renee has a cool story, you know, being a, a PE teacher and whatnot and being at the age that she's at. But as far as skill goes, uh, Dufre should be able to get on top, should be able to write out a decision. And... Uh, and if she's been, and if she has been uh, working hard, be able to use that uh, that wrestling in that top game to get a submission. But who knows? You know, who knows if, if if she'll be able to do that? She's second second fight in the UFC, second time she's missed weight. She's she's a tall girl. You know, she's a very tall girl. So w with her frame, it's going to be tough for her to make 135. I don't even know if she'll be able to do it. Um, and and if she had, if she sticks around, you know. So who knows with her? She should be fighting at 145. And uh, with Renee, you know, at, at her old age, I would hate to count her out. Uh, but she, and she does come to fight. Something I will say about Renee, she does come to fight. She is a fighter. And, um, but I see Dufre getting on top, riding it out. Um, so my pick will be Dufre, uh, Alexis Dufre here by decision. But it is a do not bet. Do not bet. I don't advise a bet on this fight at all. And um, and uh, if I had to bet it, I wouldn't. I really just wouldn't bet this fight. Just let it, just just uh, skip it if you want. Uh, watch it if you want to see what these girls have in store in the future. But um, I'm really not eager for it at all, honestly. And uh, I don't know. I, now, as a, as a fan, uh, I'll be rooting for for Renee. You know, it's uh, like I said, it's a cool story, and uh, but I just have no desire to bet this fight whatsoever. I think realistically, I think it'll happen as Dufre will write out a decision, just use her top control, and that'll be it. The next fight is a bit more interesting. Interesting. We've got Omari Akhmedov versus Mats Nilsson. Whew, this is a good, interesting fight. The fight I spent a lot of time breaking down, looking for a, an opportunity, but ultimately, I mean, the odds just don't allow for, really, for a bet here. Um, for this one, we got Omari. 
training at Greg Jackson's, and uh, that's a great camp for a lot of these uh, Dagestani fighty, fighters, you know, going in there and uh, taking care of business. With uh, John Jones, Greg Jackson, company, everybody, Tim Kennedy over there, um, you know, Carlos Condit, all those good guys over there. And uh, let's see, where's he at right now? Minus 165, plus 155. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about Omari. Omari obviously has power, heavy hands. Um, I believe the, the past six months or so have really done done uh, done him well, and I believe to see. I believe we will see his takedown defense uh, improve, his rest, overall wrestling game improve, rest, grappling game. And with Mats Nilsson, um, he's the opposite. He's working on his striking game, and I believe we'll see an improved striking game from him. Um, his jiu-jitsu is already top-notch. Grappling is already top-notch. So two opposite guys working on opposite things. What's going to happen? Well... We'll have to wait and see because we don't want to speculate. We don't want to get too much into the ifs and if he's improved this much and if he's improved that much and if he's done this and if he's done that. Um, we don't want to. I personally don't don't like that, and uh, I've got caught with that in the past, and I've learned those lessons. So I'm going to say I do not bet just to pass on this fight. I do favor Akhmedov to win a 29-28 type of decision or get a knockout but I can't count out Matt Snilson I really can't count him out um, if he gets on top God knows if he gets on top and gets a submission I won't be surprised if I met up knocks him out I won't be surprised so there's too many too many outcomes to this fight too many outcomes and um, I don't in my opinion it's not worth a bet so um, I'm going to say it's a do not bet mm. If I had to bet it, if I had to put my money down on it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. But it would be Akhmedov. I would have to say I would trust Akhmedov. Um, but I see something in Nilsson watching his fights and um, his improvement. I can't ignore what I see out of him. So uh, I have to go with Akhmedov. But I'm going to say do not bet. And let's not forget both these guys have fought at middleweight and also welterweight. And um, it's just a tough fight to call, really. I could see it going either way. But uh, I'm going to go with Akhmedov for the win. Do not bet. For the next fight, this one is a bit easier here. Uh, Evan Dunham versus Rodrigo Dam. Rodrigo Dam. Very, both these fighters, Very, I am very familiar with. Evan Dunham, in my opinion, has been underrated all along has been robbed a couple of times um so he's already he's got that working against him on a terrible losing streak he has faced really good guys and uh Rodrigo Dam he's just like he's just like on the cusp but can't really get to where he needs to be at to win fights Evan Dunham his striking is kind of like the his boxing is sort of it reminds me of the Diaz brothers kind of a slap style not really looking for knockouts or I should say not really not looking for knockouts looking to score points uh, whatever that means now and uh, and his wrestling is underrated in my opinion very good wrestling Jiu Jitsu is very good we know that though but I think his wrestling is the part that's underrated and then um, with Dam he just wants to force it. He wants to force it to be a kickboxing match when he should really be looking for, to use his wrestling and his takedowns. He'll probably never do it, and he's towards the end of his career. So I'm going to go with Dunham by decision. Once again, if I had to bet it, I really wouldn't. I really don't want to bet this fight. Otherwise, I would. But uh, if I had to, I'd say Dunham. I just, damn, I can't get behind that, that fighter, man. He's just not, he's not the guy for me. Uh, he just doesn't, he, whenever I think about investing, uh, I, I see it as an investment, investing in a fighter, putting your money behind a fighter, uh, damn, is not on that list, so, Evan Dunham for the win by decision, do not bet. This next fight, phew, man, <laughs> we got Sean Jordan against Jared Cannonier, and, uh, 
Kanier coming out of Alaska, out of all places. The killer gorilla coming out of Alaska. Kind of interesting. And uh, we shall see. We shall see his last fight going to a split decision victory over uh, <laughs> over um, Tony Lopez. And uh, But he has moved down to the MMA lab. And he's not playing around down there, you know. There's no games playing or <laughs> being played at the MMA lab. And Sean Jordan, God damn, that, that chin of his is just, pfft. I mean, this guy weighs 260 and his chin is like 160 pounds when he fights these heavyweights. I just don't, I just don't see it for him. So, it's a heavyweight fight. Anything can happen. We've seen it all throughout 2014 and we'll continue to see it. Just anything can happen. And, uh. This will be my first upset of the night that I pick. So I'm going with Jared Cannonier by knockout in round one. I think what will happen is they'll get into an ex into exchanges. And I think Jared can catch him. If I had to bet it, I would bet a prop. Now, depending on your bankroll, you could be limited. You could be limited, but you may not be limited. So if I had to bet it, it would definitely be an inside the distance prop. And being it that it is heavyweight and anything can happen. Um, given Jordan's chin. Uh, if Jordan wins, I think it'll have to be by him taking Jared down. And, uh, and if Jared wins, I think it'll be by knockout. So I don't trust Sean Jordan's chin and... Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not ready to invest in that guy. And with Jared, you know, like I said, he he's undefeated. Doesn't know what it's like to lose. And um, I think he's gonna go in there just guns blazing, MMA lab, just ready to do some work. And I will have a tiny, a little baby, tiny little prop round robin with uh, Jared in it. But uh, but nothing even worth mentioning. So I will say it's a do not bet. But once we get into the bets, I'll go over that. Okay. For the next fight, now this fight really interests me. I spent a lot of time dissecting this one, and I believe I have found a real live dog here. And I like to say not one that will bark, but one that will actually bite. So we have Marcus Brimage versus Cody Garbrandt. Now. Marcus Brimage, we're all very familiar with. Most of us watching this video and listening to this are should be pretty familiar with Marcus Brimage. He is good and he has a lot of potential, but he has been staying home for his camps. And that, to me, for, for a fighter at his level, at his age, with his uh, development, development process in the stage that he's at right now, needs to be needs to be training at a big team, especially when he already has trained at a big team. Video game lover. I don't know if he's getting uh, uh, sidetracked, depressed, or whatever is going on with him with those video games. And I could be totally wrong, but, you know, uh, staying at home, you know, I, I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. And uh, with Cody Garbrandt, we have a guy doing the opposite, putting himself in a... Uh, getting out of his comfort zone, putting himself in a, in a position to learn and positioning him, himself with the best 135-pound, best 145-pound fighters in the world in Team Alpha Male. I really like this fighter. I think we have a winner in our hands. Um, I have been very impressed with what I've seen from him, and I think we'll, we're going to continue to be impressed. I like Cody Garbrandt here by knockout in round two. I think that uh, time away from ATT for Co for Marcus Brimage will have um, will cost him. And I think the time spent at Team Alpha Male for Cody will pay off. So that is going to be my live dog, one of my live dogs for uh, I guess it's tonight now. Tonight, Cody Garbrandt by knockout round two. If I had to bet it, and I am going to bet it, it would be on Cody, um, and it would be. Straight up, you know, straight up uh, Cody Garbrandt, let's see, at uh, plus 160. So, very, very nice. For the next one, 
another interesting uh, fight here. And uh, in 2014, I found myself looking at dogs too much, being um, being burnt by a favorite, being taken out by a dog that I, you know, wasn't counting on, and uh, just had me looking at dogs and this and that. But th in 2015, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know what, I'm not gonna. chase any dogs because if you're chasing dogs golly you're gonna hear it's it's not a it's not a um, it shouldn't be uh what should i say it shouldn't be something that you're constantly looking for but rather taking each individual fight breaking it down and if the dog is live but not not forcing it you know not forcing it if it's a live dog good if not not but here uh Paul Felder was already on my list. Uh, I make a list of fighters that to watch that that I think have potential. Um, guys that have been on that list, guys like uh, Junior Dos Santos, way back in the day, way back in the day when he fought uh, Fabrizio Verdum, um, uh, Brandon Thatch, um, just just a, a bunch of different guys. I'm not going to go into the whole thing right now, but Paul Felder is one of those guys, and uh, I have been very impressed by him. Um, I'm very impressed with the fact that he also took himself out of his comfort zone and went down to uh, Don Cerrone's ranch to train with Don Cerrone. And uh, just overall very impressed with this guy, under another undefeated fighter. And I think he'll remain that way. Danny Castillo, we know what we're going to get out of him. If you're listening to this, you already know <clears throat> what we're going to get out of Danny Castillo. You're going to know we're going to get a tough wrestler and uh, who's hard to put away. But... Um, but you know, being 35 years old, having lost that fight with Tony Ferguson, he's not he's not going to get to the top. No way. Once he reaches the top, what, five, six, seven guys in the world, he's going to get killed. So uh, I think this is the end of the road for him. I think uh, he'll just, after this, he'll lose this fight. And after this, he'll get some pretty easy fights. And eventually, he'll get taken out once and for all. Um, and that's it. I like Paul Felder here. I think he can take him out on the feet. I think he can knock him out. I think he'll be able to stuff Danny Castillo's takedowns. And if he gets taken down, get back up, beat him up. I think uh, Paul Felder is a winner here. So I like Paul Felder. Like I said, his Muay Thai striking game, his karate, um, his takedown defense will have improved. His wrestling will have improved. And uh, I like Paul Felder to win a decision, if not possibly get the knockout in round one. If I had to bet it, it would be on Paul Felder. Straight up, plus 200. Chow, man. Ooh, wee. And uh, the prop bet on uh, by knockout TKO is crazy. So we'll put a tiny little something on it uh, and we'll keep moving forward. Hector Lombard. Mi tocayo Hector Lombard versus Josh Berkman. Josh Berkman being in the position that nobody wants to be in. And that is going to be the main card of the the main card leading up for the main card pay per view. Here we go, baby. Hector Show. <laughs> oh man, this guy, the Show Weather. Mm. Hector Lombard versus Josh Berkman. Here we go. So <laughs> Hector Lombard can win this fight any way he wants. Uh, knockout, decision, submission, and uh, Josh, Berkman, <laughs> Josh Berkman is going to have to get lucky, and that's what it would be at this point, you know, lucky uh, Hector Lombard sitting at some, uh, let's see, minus 900, I think, yep, minus 950, minus 800, minus 650 in one spot, if you feel frisky, minus 650 in one spot, but uh, minus 1,004 in a funky spot, uh, just just some crazy lines here with with uh, Hector Lombard and and the last thing I need to start off my 2015 is to get caught speeding on a minus 1,000 favorite, you know. So I'll look elsewhere. There's a prop, but I'm not overly crazy about it because I can see I can see uh, Lombard. The, 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 let's make no doubt about it. My pick is Hector Lombard. I'm going to say knockout round one because I think he's going to go in there looking for the kill and getting that that uh, that that finish. But I can see Hector Lombardi getting a decision too. 
you know, doing what he did to Jake Shields, dominating him on the ground and uh, controlling him. I don't think he'll do that. I think he'll actually get the finish. But I, no, make no mistakes about it. My pick is Hector Lombard. Um, but like I said, if something funky happens in Lombard, pff, God knows, you know, gets knocked out or Berkman uh, lands at that, that uh, uh, guillotine, guillotine or just, you know, some, I just, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not eager to put money on Hector Lombard in this position against a, against a better opponent. Okay. But um, not in this position, I'm not eager. So if I had to bet it, it would be a prop on Hector Lombard. And I will bet it. Very small, just tiny. But because uh, I don't want to get carried away with too many bets. Um, so Hector Lombard by knockout round one. And uh, But I'm not eager. Like I said, I'm not eager for it. So um, I set up all my bets in a ratio and, um, corresponding to my most confident pick to my least confident pick sometimes it's not even the confidence it's the value the 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 price and the value and um where the market has settled on these on these different uh bets that has a decision that has a, a role in, in the deciding factor of whether or not to pull the trigger so for a long-winded answer hector lombard by knockout in round one that is it. Kyoji Horiguchi and Louis Gagno. Now, I'm not eager to bet these Japanese fighters. Uh, Sasaki really let me down big time, costing me money, and I'm not happy about that. Um, I know it's a totally different fighter, but he too is making that that trip across the uh, Pacific Ocean and uh, you know I'm not overly eager here with this ridiculous line also once again it's a uh, you know the ridiculous line what do we got it at right now Horiguchi minus uh, minus 700 650 800 thousand one spot so oh, it's just right around there um, and Louis Gardino you know I see a I really see a a guy who uh, knows what time it is. You know, it's time to, to do or die here. And uh, and I think he's going to come prepared. I, I think Horiguchi will get a decision. I don't think he'll get the 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 the, um, the finish like a lot of people are predicting and saying that he's going to kill him and this and that. I think Louis going to be game. These little 125-pound fighters, man, they're game. And I'm not eager to bet Horiguchi. Horiguchi is very talented. Yes, he's got everything. Uh, he's got great movement inside the octagon. And, uh, and I think the UFC is setting him up here to win because they need somebody for Demetrius Johnson. I think that would be a great rivalry. Demetrius Johnson against Kyoji Horiguchi, great matchup. So Horiguchi should win. I won't be surprised if he finishes him. So if I had to bet it, it would be a prop on Horiguchi. But, uh, but I'm not eager for it. Um, I'm not going to play anything on this fight. Um, I'll say Louis survives to lose a decision. But if Horiguchi knocks him out, I won't be surprised either. So Horiguchi definitely will be the pick, but uh, do not bet. All right, we're getting down. We're getting down to the to the last three fights. Very interesting fights here. Nate the Great Marquardt versus Brad Tavares. <sighs> Nate the Great Marquardt. I'll never forget the time I watched him... Uh, Slam Taylor Latis on his head. It's like a pile driver, some sort of like uh, some sort of move you would see CM Punk or Brock Lesnar pull off in the in the WWE. You know, just just uh, just a testosterone filled, raged fighter. And I thought, wow, man, this guy is just a beast. And then I'll never forget the time that he got just just wrestle fucked by Chael Sonnen. I'm thinking to myself, what the hell? And from there, I followed his career, you know, up and down and this and that. And he knocks out Tyron Woodley. And I just, this guy's just all over the place. And I think he's at a point where, uh, you know, moving back up to 185 pounds from 170. I, 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 don't, I don't like the direction his, his career is going. And uh, where Brett Tavares, you know, he, uh, he impressed me when he fought uh, Aaron Simpson. And he impressed me when he fought Yoel Romero. And I think Brad Tavares knows what time it is, and it's time for him to win a fight. I believe he totally overlooked 
uh, Tim Boach. Totally overlooked him. And uh, Tim Boach is not a guy to overlook. You know, that guy just has brute, brute uh, lumberjack strength. And uh, you can't overlook a guy like that. So, um, but I do expect Brett Tavares to rebound here. He's got Ray Seffel in his corner. That's Ray Seffel's boy there. And, uh, and I expect him to get a decision here. I expect Brett Tavares to mix up his uh, wrestling, his clinch work. Mm. A lot of water. Um, clinch work up against the cage, dirty boxing, and uh, and get the better of, of Nate Marquardt here. I think um, I don't. I'm not sold that Nate Marquardt wants to continue fighting. I think he's burnt out. He's like 50, 15, and five or some crazy record like that. You know, he's been fighting forever. Much respect to him, but you know, it, it's time for. It's not. It's not his time anymore. So Brett Tavares for the bet. If I had to bet it, and I am going to bet it, it'd be Brett Tavares plus money and. Uh, We'll get down. We'll get into that in a second. I think you'll get a decision. And uh, let's move on to the Cowboy, baby. We got Donald Cerrone against Miles Jury. Hoo-wee. When this fight, when this fight first got announced, I was like, "Oh yeah, Miles Jury! Finally, I'm gonna get to bet against the Cowboy and make some money." I bet on him and I've lost money. I don't. I don't feel like I've ever bet on the Cowboy and won. And I feel like I bet against him, waiting for his demise. And, and uh, so, for me, this fight is I do not bet. And uh, and then I started doing my my tape study, watching the fights, watching all the different things and the interviews and everything. And one thing that I took away from this past few weeks of refreshing my mind on the cowboy is that this guy is just a tough sob this guy just does not give a hoot this guy wants to live his life do his thing and he doesn't really care and uh and i think ever since he's had ever since he's been training more at his at his uh at his ranch and his training facility and he's got these this 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 wrestling coach he's got this this uh, rude boy Muay Thai and this wrestler coach he's got. And and uh, I've seen a difference in the Cowboy. I really have. And you would think that uh, by him, it, it, it appears to me, I don't know for a fact, but it appears to me that he's been training more as ranch, more so than Greg Jackson's, even though I'm sure he trains at Greg Jackson's. I know he trains at Greg Jackson's. But I think he's been moving more towards doing his own thing. He has been paying off. I mean, he just, every single time he's been out there, he looks a little bit, you know, iffy at times, but man, once he gets it going, like he did against Alvarez, my God, he's just, just a machine. And Miles Jury, you know, my dog uh, Dan, I gotta, I gotta give him props for bringing up this up to me about the Mike Ritchie fight. I started watching the Mike Ritchie fight, and I'm just like, really? And if you look at his opposition, I mean, some of the guys had one foot out the door, one foot on the banana peel. You know, it's just now Miles Jury is very smart. His, uh, his coach, the skinny George Lopez, he's very smart too. And um, and they're going to have a good game plan for him. They're going to have a very good game plan for him. If, if, if Nate Diaz, who... You know, let, what is there to say about Nate Diaz? Can, uh, can outsmart the Cowboy? What do you guys think Miles Jury can do? So it's a very interesting fight. And then to boot, then to top it all off, um, the cowboy says he's injured, and uh, that drives a line. You know, now it's you can find him at minus one forty. Whereas Miles Jury, I remember looking at at the line. Uh, I believe it was a day it opened, maybe like two days. It hit plus one ninety. Now, when the line opens like that, obviously the 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 amount is very limited that you can put down on it but i'm just thinking to myself i bet you this line will settle around a pick em, a slight underdog uh with a slight underdog being miles jury and sure enough it'll probably settle right around there um you know miles jury he 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 uh, undefeated in, in in the ufc lost to ally quinta but that was an exhibition match because he wasn't getting paid and um uh, he just, he's a very, like I say, he's a very smart fighter, very well-rounded, 
he has good wrestling, good jujitsu, good striking, good striking defense. It has the whole overall game. But the Cowboy asked for this fight. The Cowboy asked Dana White for this fight. He said, give me that boy. He, he didn't say, give me that guy. He said, give me that boy. Uh, Don Cerrone, I think, is 31. Miles Jury is like 20. Why is he 26? Here, let me double check. 20, 20 something. He is. 26. He's 26 years old, born in 1988. I mean, this is a man going up against a young man. I mean, I I can't. Like, like I said, at first I thought Miles Jury, but Cowboy, like I said, this tear that he's been on. And uh, just, I just think he has, he's a complete package. And I, and I really don't see, imagine if we got to see this Cowboy against, this, this Cowboy we've seen lately against Anthony Pettis. That would be a very interesting fight. And um, and I remember Cowboy saying that for that Anthony Pettis fight, he was doing everything right, meaning that he was just just training, eating, training, sleeping, eating, training, sleeping, training, taking naps, sleeping, eating, and he was just driving him nuts. And he went out there, got uh, kicked, got knocked out. But when he does all his his extreme stuff, it keeps him hungry, it keeps him motivated. I mean, he knows he sees what's paying for all that stuff, all that lifestyle. So I expect the Cowboy to go in there injured or not and win a decision, if not finish, Miles Jury. So if this line keeps moving, I'm going to have to pull the trigger on uh, on the Cowboy. Man, if the Cowboy got down to like, jeez, if he got down to minus 110, minus 120, I don't think it'll happen. But if he did, no, I, don't, I doubt it. Minus 120-ish. God, I, I wouldn't have a choice. I mean, I would have a choice, obviously, but it would be interesting there, depending on how that, depending on how the three dogs have, had 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 uh, had been going. Even then, it would be very small, so it's not even it's not even anything worth stressing out about. But uh, but you know, we know what the cowboy brings. You know, he's got excellent Muay Thai. He's got good Jiu Jitsu. He's got decent wrestling. I mean, he's he's just well rounded. And that's going to be the toughest test for, for Miles Jury yet. So uh, I'm very excited for this fight. Very, very excited for this fight. I'm not going to bet it. Um, unless, like I said, unless the line gets ridiculous for Cerrone, minus 110, uh, minus one, uh, probably, uh, probably, probably at minus 120, I'd be interested in it. But uh, for now, it's a do not bet. Even if it hits minus 120, I can't guarantee that I'll pull the trigger. Now, if it went to plus money, then I would have to. Then I would. If it goes to just even plus 100, then I would have to. Small, but not nothing to make or break my night, obviously. Nothing even worth remotely making or breaking the night. But um, I can't ignore it. I can't ignore what I've seen from the Cowboy. Uh, I do expect a very smart game, Miles Jury, to go in there. But um, but uh, I think the Cowboy is just... I think it'll. he may be able to intimidate Miles Jury and really bring it to him. Intimidate him in a sense, just bringing the fight to him, kicking, I mean, uh, elbowing, punches, everything. The whole, the whole, the whole patois. So, uh, so that's it for that. And then let's, so if I had to bet it, I wouldn't because I think it's a very, very close fight. Um, so do not bet. And uh, the pick, oh man, I haven't said the pick on Cerrone by decision. Donald Cerrone by decision. But if Miles Jury wins, I won't be surprised. So do not bet. And the main event, the fight you have all been waiting for. We got John Bones Jones against Daniel D.C. Cormier. The real deal. Chris Cormier. <laughs> uh, that's a reference to an old bodybuilder guy uh, back in the like Ronnie Coleman days uh, Chris Corm Chris the real deal Cormier so anyway so this is a very interesting fight because I am a big fan of aka uh, love the Bay Area but I don't see I don't see Daniel Cormier stepping away walking away walking out of the octagon with that UFC light heavyweight belt. I don't see it. Cormier 
who has he beat? He beat that Todd Durkin guy, who's very good, but uh, t Todd Durkin took that, uh, Pat Cummings took that fight on short notice. And then he beat, uh, you know, old aging, 185 pound Dan Henderson, who, uh, one of my favorite all time fighters, but come on, man, you're taking on Todd Durkin on short notice and uh, Dan Henderson. Come on, really? And now we're supposed to believe that he's going to take out John Jones. Fuck, get out of here with that nonsense. 4-0 in the UFC. John Jones, 15-0 in the UFC. Are you freaking kidding me or what? So, um, I think the only shot here Daniel Cormier has is to get on top of John Jones for 25 minutes and ride him out. And I don't think John Jones is going to allow that to happen. I mean, John Jones has showed us, even through... Even when he takes fights lightly like he did against Gustafsson, he still finds a way to win. He still finds a way to, 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 to prevail, to, to overcome. He's a real champion. And uh, I think what I was mentioning earlier about, um, about the media and the hype and everything, and, and that is that it, the media and everything that has, that has made this fight what it is now, has really hyped it up as a pick 'em type of fight. Anything can happen. And I think the line reflects that, although I don't believe that is the actual case of what's going to go down in the octagon, meaning that John Jones, in my opinion, should be closer to minus 250, minus 260, minus 270, but he's sitting at minus 165, minus 170, minus 165. So... That is just, oh, chow, man, I can't believe it. And uh, and uh, we can't be afraid. I, I can't be afraid to pull the trigger on it. You know, like I said, you never want to bet more than you can afford to lose, so that's why you budget yourself. And uh, But I'm pulling the trigger here on John Jones. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. If I lose, then hey, I, I lost. But you know what? I can't ignore what I see. John Jones can win this fight by knocking out. Daniel Cormier by submitting Daniel Cormier by winning a decision to Daniel Cormier. I don't think it'll be quite as easy as the fight he had with Rashad Evans. I don't think it'll be quite as difficult as the fight he had with Gustafsson. Um, but I think Daniel, uh, I think Daniel Cormier here is is gonna is, is in is in in for too much. He's in over his head here. Uh, John Jones got the reach, the distance. Uh, John Jones has very good wrestling. I won't be surprised here if John Jones. Out wrestles Daniel Cormier. I really won't be surprised. And um, Daniel Cormier says that Luke Rockhold can do everything John Jones does or, and better. I don't think that's the case. I don't. I think once he steps into the octagon with John Jones, he's going to realize, oh man, this is some some out of my league here. And uh, I really like Daniel Cormier. I really do. I, I think he is a is a great guy. His life, everything he's been through has been difficult. Uh, much like a, a lot of people's lives, but I think he, uh, especially him, you know, uh, I uh, I feel for him and, and, you know, his losses he's had in his life and, and things, and and um, I think he's a very good guy, um, but I, I don't I don't think he's going to be our new champ. I really don't believe it. Uh, I don't see it. John Jones, he, he's, he's, uh, he's the UFC light heavyweight champ, and I think he'll continue to be so, and I think John Jones has very big plans. And uh, John Jones is um, he's, he's underrated in the sense that he's smarter than than most people give him credit for. He's a very intelligent guy, and and he knows what his strengths are. He knows what his weaknesses are. And I think he's going to be very prepared for this fight. I think that John Jones will possibly finish Daniel Cormier, and uh, but I'm going to say he gets a decision. He wins by decision. And uh, and still, UFC light heavyweight, John Jones. And what I'll be doing when that is announced is I'll be screaming uh, the way that John Jones did today at the weigh-in. Yeah, yeah, like that, yeah, because I will be so happy that, uh, that we have started 2015 off with a bang. And um, very excited for this fight. Very excited. John Jones, by decision, will be the bet and the pick. And ciao, man. All right, so uh, let's get down to it here. So UFC 180, 182 MMA dogs 
Five stars, unfortunately, none. Four stars, medium to large play. John Bones Jones at minus 165. Oh, man. Now, I want to move on to the three stars, but I want to let you know, as I always do, that the five stars are largely huge plays. Four stars are medium to large. Three stars are small to medium plays. In this instance, John Jones is a large play at four stars. And the three-star plays I'm about to say are small to very small plays. They're actually under a unit. So depending on what your bankroll is, depending on how much you're betting, you have to keep that in mind. So, oh, running out of battery here, so I have to speed up. Paul Felder at plus 200. Cody Garbrandt at plus 160. Brad Tavares at plus 130. And then... Uh, so the bets are John Jones at minus 165, 6.60 units to win 4.0 units. Let me, let me see here. So John Jones at minus 165, 6.60 units to win 4. Paul Felder at plus 200, 0.75 units to win 1.50 units. Cody Garbrandt, plus 160, 0.75 units to win 1.20 units. Now these are all in the text file too, so if you're just watching the video... Um, it'll be on text, so all our clients get to see us in text uh, file. One, uh, Brad Tavares at plus 130, 0.75 units to win 0.975 units. I'm speeding it up because I don't want the battery to die here. Uh, the round robin of two six parlays at 0.05 units each. The total bet is 0.30 units to win 1.37 units. John Jones, Paul Felder, Cody Garbrandt, Brad Tavares. The same thing, but round robin of threes. So four parlays at 0.01 units each. Total bet is 0.04 units to win 0.47 units. Same guys, John Jones, Paul Felder, Garbrandt, Tavares. This is by threes. And the round robin of twos, uh, six parlays at 0 0.01 units each. Very, very tiny little plays. Total bet is 0 0.06 units to win 0 0.99 units if they all win. And that'll be Lombard inside the distance at minus 142. Jared Conier wins by knockout. Uh, TKL plus 275. Cody Garbrandt wins by knockout plus 425. And Paul Felder wins by knockout plus 550. Grand total 9.25 units to win 10.51 units. 9.25 units to win 10.51 units. Woo! So there you have it, baby. UFC 182. I can't wait. I hope you guys all had a great holiday. Happy holiday. I hope tomorrow night we're all, tonight we're all young. Yeah, baby! Woo! Yeah! And uh, I will talk to you guys real soon. Take care.